Welcome to Sparks Auto Tools production. Today we're going to be looking at network backbone presentation. I have put up a couple of slides where I describe and explain the different things you need to know about building a network backbone, uh, the product lines, the protocols involved, and the competencies you need to build. So I have actually divided this into two categories, the concept and protocols, the product itself, and the services which uh, can go through the network backbone. So let's quickly go to the first concept and protocol we need. Now for this, um, like I said earlier, I had divided this into different concepts. And uh, for the first concept, we'll be considering routing. And routing is a very uh, big industrialized protocol that um, have different versions, different types. And as you can see here, we have OSPF, which is the Open Shortest Path First Protocol, the Border Gateway Protocol, which is BGP and uh, MBGP. We have the ISIS, the Intermediate System, Intermediate System. Now, of course, we have the Quality of Service as a Protocol, which is QoS. We have the VRRP, uh, Virtual Routing Redundancy Protocol. We also have the Multi-Path Level Switching, which is the MPLS. This can actually be implemented in two forms, the LDP, which is Level Distribution Protocol, or either the Traffic Engineering, which is the Resource Reservation Protocol. We also have the Layer 3 VPN, which is Virtual Private Network. Then, of course, uh, we have the VRF, the virtual routing and forwarding, context routing, um, policy based routing and aggregation. Now, of course, for you to be able to implement an end to end routing, you should have competence from these different routing protocols. Even though some might not be supported in other vendor equipment, but um, it's a good thing you have a cross knowledge of these routing protocols. So, let's move on to the next one, which is switching. Here, in switching, um, there are, we have the concept of VLAN. This is actually separating traffic or different broker's domain. We also have trunk concepts. This is when you are connecting a switch to another switch. Then we also have the 802.1Q VLAN tagging. This is actually a concept that allows you to carry multiple of traffic in one VLAN, but then it is being differentiated by the tax. Then we have the STP, RSTP. This is actually a spanning tree protocol. And R stands for the Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol. It's actually an evolved type of the STP. We also have the EAP, the Ethernet Automatic Protocol Switching. And this is owned by the Xtreme Networks. And then we have the Layer 2 QoS Stacking. This is when you have more than one switch and you want to pile them up. Then VRP as well, then Dynamic Routing Protocols and Link Aggregation. Link Aggregation here means having multiple of ports which you want to um, combine together in order to build more capacity and bandwidth. So that is that for switching. Um, if you can learn all this, um, the better for you. Then we go to security. In security here, we can see a couple of uh, concepts uh, like the stateful inspection concept, uh, the zoning concept. This is where you differentiate different traffics according to the zone. Maybe the trusted zone, DMZ zone, untrusted zone, etc. They have also the virtual routing concept, the VR. They have the V6, the virtual systems, then dynamic routing protocols in terms of the OSPF BGP for the security. You have the IPsec, the IPsec tunnels. You have the NSRP, the Net Screen Redundancy Protocol, and then the screen options. So, um, like I said earlier, we have these three basic concepts, the routing, the switching, the security. Now, let's move ahead to see the product lines we can use to implement this. Yeah, in as much as we want to be the backbone network, we also need to consider which vendor product we can use to achieve this. So um, the next slide shows us the product. Here we can see different vendor names like Ericsson, Juniper, Cisco, Xtreme. And um, of course, down here you have the Huawei, ZT, Alcatel, and Nokia systems. All these are vendors and they have different equipments. And um, as such, depending on what you want to build, your budget and um, what exactly you need, you have in mind, you can make some vendor selection here. Um, but of course, I can say that um, I think Ericsson has the strongest backbone because uh, they have this concept of MPBN, which is the Mobile Packet Backbone Network. So, But um, other players like Juniper and Cisco are also strong IT leaders in terms of uh, network backbone equipment as well. So let's go to the next slide so that we can see the hardware details of some of these vendor equipment. Now, okay, good. So this is uh, Smart Edge Hardware. You can see we have um, the two, 1200, 800, and 400 chassis types. Now, basically, um, this pictorial representation is just showing us the card slots and the controller. This uh, XRP here actually means controller. is the controller card. 
and it's always in slot 7 and 8 for this chassis 1200 and 800 and for chassis 400 uh, we have them in slot 5 and 6 i mean this just shows the line traffic cards basically and um, the controller cards and you can actually read up this more on in ericsson's um, website so let's go to the next one where we'll see cisco and juniper hardware these are just few of the many products they have uh, including their routers and their switches but to mention again this two vendors cisco and juniper are both giant leaders in it backbone equipment okay good now we've seen a couple of uh, vendor equipment like we earlier said but also we need to understand the operating system which is the os types and uh, because in as much as we have different vendors we also have different platform for these vendors now for ericsson ericsson maintains the smart edge os which is SEOS for smart edges and ipos for SSR. Cisco has always been on iOS and then Juniper Routers maintains the Junos like we already see where we have the M series um, in the last slide. Here uh, we have the M7i, M10i, M2040 and so on and so forth. So Juniper Firewalls also makes use of uh, the screen OS types and uh, Junos for SRS. Maybe they are planning on consolidation, who knows. And for extreme networks, um, what you can see here, you have uh, the extreme XOX. So that is that for the OS type. And then what this basically means is you have to build competence in familiarizing yourself with this platform, else you might not be able to integrate or work on this vendor product. So here, um, for the switching parts, this are uh, some extreme product family overview. Extreme products have been known for their long-term contribution in the industry with their switching product. And here you can see I've uh, showed some switching products, wireless products, security products, and network management products. But um, in order not to waste our time, we can you can actually go to their website www.extremenetworks.com. Here you can find a whole lot of information on their product so let's look at the services um, which we can connect to go via the network backbone you know like i earlier mentioned i have said that um, network operators these days or network organizations don't like having too many nodes to manage but then they prefer just having a centralized or consolidated backbone network where they have different product lines connecting through now and these are some of the services you can find in the network today when i say network i mean it, it could be a telecom and in some cases the it industry now we have the gprs general packet radio services the some of the services includes packet uh, transfer the end user of internet wap mms browser now uh, some of the nodes you can find these are based on three gpp standards you have the sgsn the ggsn sgsn here stands for the servicing gateway support node and ggsn stands for the gprs gateway support node and then you have the, the dns the radius the pcrf and then you have the dpi which is the deep packet inspection um you also have um, the concept of the services of the mss the mobile soft switch um, which basically uh, is meant for the voice and you have network element nodes like the msc the media gateway which is the mgw the hlr home location register and the stp now um, all these are nodes that connects to the backbone in order for them to function properly in the iron as well the intelligent network side we have the sdp the air the ccn voucher server means that and so on and so forth now lt i'll be showing a different video coming soon hopefully for this and okay with this now we can just see a diagrammatic representation of how this works or how this can be shown in a network now this is a sample backbone network that shows us uh, this red part is the firewall like I earlier mentioned you know how we talked about routing switching and security now basically what that means for routing we talk about routers for switching we talk about switches for security we talk about firewalls and this makes up a backbone network so you can see the red part here on this diagram is the firewall now we have these two on the both the left side and the right side these are switches and these are used for switching and here as you can see we have the routers here these are the two routers the, the chceo1 and the chceo2 now um, basically what this diagram is showing we can see the different nodes we mentioned from the different services here 
and then um, you can see these are different sites and um, but then with the help of the backbone network this network elements have been able to interconnect and speak to each other because now this doesn't just allow for interconnection it also provides security that is why the firewall is here it has to filter and to determine what network elements are sending what so uh, with this i hope this video has been informative and i would like to thank you for viewing